Hello everyone. I just wanted to start this one out by saying that uh, there will be a third in this series. Uh, it's kind of hard to drop a bombshell like this and then just say, well, there you are. It's not gonna be. <laughs> Probably never going to happen and I'll explain why, but there, there is a way out of this mess. Oh, I'm glad I caught you. Something terrible is It's the end of the world not offer some hope that maybe we can solve this as hard as it's going to be you're not going to like it no one's going to like it but if you really love your children and your grandchildren we're going to do it what is last week as you recall last guy As you will remember from our last episode, Death by Gas, Methane, we looked at the problems of methane being released around the globe, uh, mainly from undersea deposits and uh, permafrost, as one of many, many what we call feedback. And, and that's what's very worrying, is that we're now getting feedbacks almost beginning to dominate the warming process. It's because they, be, they continued to look at the evidence. And at first they said, gee, this is interesting. And then they said, oh, wow, something's really happening. Now it's getting to the point where scientists are saying, uh-oh. Kind of a spectrum of folks speaking about these issues. On, the, on one far end, you've got folks like Guy McPherson who are saying, okay, you know, we're all going to die in 100 years and, and you know, not... Not from biological pro I mean, the planet's going to die. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, as any of you who've worked with audio know, the um, feedback does not occur gradually. It, ca it happens very quickly. It's a, um exponential rise in the uh, strength of the signal. So if you don't turn it off real fast, you have problems. In this video, we're going to look at another natural gas that uh, we all need to live and, and breathe to survive. It's also one of the most caustic gases out there. Uh, everything, every time you hear the word oxidize, it means oxygen is eating away at it, breaking it down, which our body uses in a beneficial way, uh, but it also can cause problems. So amongst all the discussion of climate change, we don't hear a whole lot about oxygen. I'm going to share with you something now that kind of blew my mind. Some people say not to worry about the air. Now recently, NASA put out a video showing how the rising CO2 levels are actually greening the Earth, that the plants are responding to this abundance of CO2. You know, it's not so bad after all. Good things coming out of it. Well, not quite. The article points out accurately enough that the, the land mass is indeed responding, but we don't get the majority of our breathable oxygen from the plant biomass on the surface of the Earth. We get it from our oceans. And as we are seeing now, we are very much in danger of losing the Pacific Ocean. And if it goes, then what I was looking at was this. Uh, my question was, well, if the biosphere responds, what's the delay time? Are we going to see a rising of oxygen as the Earth greens up from all the CO2? Would there be, further down the road, this huge spike in oxygen content? So I went searching around, come to find out just the opposite is happening for reasons that are quite complex, uh, various chemical reactions going on in the atmosphere, um, we are actually losing oxygen. There are now places in the world, the average oxygen content is 21%, and we're seeing places such as in Tokyo, where the oxygen content is as low as uh, 7%. There are even oxygen bars now opening up in Tokyo. It's not safe out here. What is the use of trying to save this mad world? Yeah, 
It's the end of the world. So here's a woman for whom this will also be a lifetime career. And as much as Dr. Sarah Moffat sees beauty here, she also worries about a change that's coming. This is going to affect the habitat that is out in the ocean for organisms that we care about, organisms that we harvest, or organisms that we eat. All a consequence of oxygen levels in the water. At the UC Davis Bodega Marine Lab, Dr. Moffat has published a new study that paints a sobering and irreversible short-term future scenario. We also have to remember that competing for our own breath is our automobiles, rusting uh, equipment. Anything that rusts is oxidizing, and that's using up oxygen out of the atmosphere. So we've got cars competing, we've got rust competing, we've got all these different chemical reactions going on to the pollutants in the atmosphere that are oxidizing, again, robbing us of the oxygen content of the planet. Well, what worries you most? about the conditions of the sea. The complacency that people at large generally, they fail to understand that our lives depend on maintaining the planet pretty much the way it was when we came along. It's the planet I knew as a kid really has changed. We've seen more change to the natural world in the last century, the last half century, and even in the last 10 years, the pace is picking up uh, at a rate that is unprecedented in all of human history. We have the technological c capacity to destroy, to unravel the systems that have taken all preceding history to put a planet that works in our favor. And we have undone it, or at least we're well along the way to undoing it. We take everything for granted and we think Earth is too big to fail. We take everything for granted and we think Earth is too big to fail. It should have awakened us to the need for us to take care of that which keeps us alive, our life support system that is built in on this planet but nowhere else in the universe could we count on having such gifts ready-made for us and for all the rest of life. Is the biosphere going to respond? No, it will not. It will not be sufficient. We count on the Pacific Ocean, and if it goes, it's just that's the end of it for us. This is the nail in our coffin. The, they think, oh, well, the, the planet's going to green up from the CO2 and we're going to have more oxygen to breathe. Exactly the opposite is going to happen. And if the Pacific Ocean goes, which it is already now dying off, huge areas that are just absolutely devoid of any life whatsoever. And when that collapses, uh, say goodbye to your favorite thing, uh, breathing. Now it's getting to the point where scientists are saying, uh-oh. That's the nail in our coffin. Do what you need to do. Find love. Do what you enjoy doing. Go buy some donuts. Fuck flossing your teeth. Enjoy the time we have because we are down to about two years before we start seeing catastrophic uh, climate collapse. And with that goes our grains. We're already seeing the destruction of rice crops that aren't coming through. Uh, Syria, as many people now recognize, is a result of the ongoing drought. So pretty soon, within a year or two, we're going to start seeing uh, our food supply affected. And if the economy doesn't crash before then, we're going to start seeing um, some really, really hard times. And we should have listened. We should have known what to do 20 years ago. And quite frankly, uh, if you listen to those who have less to lose by being honest and truthful, i.e. they don't have children to whom they have to answer to, they will tell you the truth, and they will tell you that, yeah, we blew it, we blew it big time, and time is up. You know, we, we had a chance to do something, and now it's too late. So bend over and kiss it goodbye. How bad it could get is kind of the guy McPherson. Well, let's just kind of all give up and and you know roll over and go into hospice. And okay, so there's one uh, there's one site on the web that that really covers this really well. Uh, I want to show this here. 
uh, a Green Road Journal. I'll try and put the link down below. Uh, but it covers, you know, where the oxygen content has historically been, uh, how you can actually check the uh, percentage of, of oxygen in your air, uh, what's normal, uh, what it historically has been, uh, what it's doing now, and what it's doing is decreasing. The problem, as noted, is that we don't get the bulk of our breathable air from the landmass. We get it from the sea, and the sea is being attacked. The oceans are being attacked from various angles, and to make it worse, we're getting all of these feedback loops, uh, particularly the methane, as we noted in the first one, there's uh, a lot of reasons the oxygen is being depleted, not just uh, from competition from engines and, and other things. There are chemical reactions going on in the air. And there's some good people there. Uh, Tom Hartman reports on it. Um, it's just, it's got everything you need to know and understand uh, about why we are in such deep, deep, deep trouble if we don't begin to get a handle on this. Um, we are literally seeing, uh, particularly in the higher population, the higher density areas, we are seeing people reaching dangerously low levels of oxygen. And, um, you know, we've already parceled out the air, or I mean, excuse me, the land, and we're currently buying up all the water rights and pretty soon it's even oxygen is going to be something that we are going to have to pay for if we want to breathe uh, because it is disappearing just like the the, the land is uh, is disappearing there aren't homeless people there are landless people so in other words if you don't participate in the system if you don't earn the paycheck and there's some great links in this, by the way. You don't earn a paycheck. You don't play the game of Monopoly. You are out. You are literally, physically out. Uh, you have no place to live. Soon you'll have no water or food. You'll have no air to breathe. And how the elite and the people who are doing, maybe they think they're going to be able to sit this out in their bunkers or whatever, but, uh, you know, my suspicion is, is that they can't stop. They're, they're like an addict who, who can't stop. So even though they're the ones who have the money and the power to fix this, they can't. They need us to stop them. We need to give our society, our system, an intervention, as it were, and reallocate the resources of our combined wealth into providing for everyone, and that means fixing the planet. Thanks very much. We take everything for granted, and we think Earth is too big to fail.